jumping right into this one, so I hope you guys are ready. And as you said, this is the first, kind of going to the third game in the series, actually. Everything else was 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, okay. so. It's a good, oh, the map choice, crevasse. Excellent map choice here from Alive. And uh, there we see uh, GL, HFs, and GGs going on here in the northeast position. Uh, if you want this guy to win, let's hear it. He is the Red Protoss. It's EG Huck. Got some Huck fans out there. And uh, this guy who so far has uh, really been dominating has the opportunity here to uh, be undefeated in his group should he defeat Huck. He is our Purple Terran spawning in the southeast. It's TSL Live. Oh, got oh. some anti-Alive fans out there. That's why StarCraft is so great. <laughs> And this map choice was very smart from Alive. You know, I was kind of going through my head, going through the map pool, thinking what map would really emphasize the way Alive likes to play. You know, macro focus, but with a difficult third um, base for Hug to take, which is definitely crevasse. Because if you just look at the way that the higher uh, natural is and then the lower ground, once Hug takes the lower ground, it's so difficult to swing all the way around. You're gonna have to build a cannon, even leave High Templar and a Zealot or something there to defend. Uh, and so excellent map choice from Alive. And Hug already, knows it. He even said in the chat, he was like, oh, this map. Because it, it will be difficult against Alive for sure. Well, let me ask you, based off of what you made, and the comments are very accurate about uh, about Alive, and it does look like we are going to have a forward barracks here. But so before we talk about this, how about the spawning positions themselves? Like, would Huck have been in a better position based off of where Alive spawned? Or do you feel like for Alive, he's sort of doubled up the advantages here going with Crevasse. I think it doesn't really matter where you spawn. Um, it, you're always going to have that third base problem, that dilemma as Protoss against Terran here. Uh, and actually, this this kind of barracks is working so well in favor of um, Alive right now. He's going to be able to throw a tech lab down. He's going to go for, uh, basically what it is, is proxy Marauder pressure. So he can instantly throw down a, re uh, a tech lab if he wants to, and then Huck is going to be in a world of trouble. And Alive is playing the map. He knows it's a macro-focused fo uh, map. You know you see a lot of Protoss players go Nexus first or Gateway, then Nexus, and he's really exploiting that fact. And luckily for him, it, you know, Huck has spawned on the same side of the map. So it's going to be very easy, and the units are going to get there very fast. Now, uh, just checking the vision here, he is going to find this Rack sees the Tech Lab down as well. So uh, he may have a little bit of time to actually go ahead and respond to this, and he will need to, because if the Marauders do uh, come out, and actually we have a Reaper yeah. coming out first and foremost, um, you know, this is this is great. I mean, the Cybernetics Core, not quite yet done. If he chooses to go with the Zealot just to get a unit out, which it doesn't look like he's going to do, um, instead he uh, actually, my bad, that was a second game. Gateway, so the Cybernetics Core yes. just gone down and with the Zealot coming out. This Reaper uh, could do a lot of damage. Yeah, here. man, this could really be the end of Hug, to be honest. The second Reaper on the way, and the Reaper's going to be able to kite the Zealot all day long. Right. The Cyber Core's only halfway done, which means the Stalker is incredibly far away. And a second bunker being made here from Alive, and the pressure is on now. And here's the control, and I don't see Alive messing up with his control with the Reaper because that's the only way Hug's going to be able to stop this. Yeah, in fact, this is very, very scary. We got probes coming out here. He's going to have to uh, do something. Probes are going to immediately go after the SCVs, but now we've got that Reaper inside bunker number one, which is completely completed by the ramp. We will see the uh, third bunker, excuse me, uh, canceled. And do we have, uh, no, we have a second Zealot out. But again, oh, he's gonna go in, oh, what are you doing? Oh, he did manage to get back in there. Very, very hurt. The SCV almost down too. And now a second Reaper is out. And uh, there's the Chrono Boost out of uh, now a Stalker and a Zealot. He has got to get it. Oh no, two bunkers up. This is. Is not looking good here for Huck. And in the background, he's expanding. You know, he's gone mm -hmm. double Reaper, triple Reaper, then into an expand. The gateways, with the, the basically the damage output from a Reaper is extremely good against structures, so the gateways are going to go down so fast. And despite having a Stalker out to deal with them, you can't deal with them when they're in a bunker like this. He's going to have to pull probes. I mean, Alive can even send another SCV to continue to repair. It really doesn't matter. And at the end of the day, he can just salvage and go home. And if you look at the, the units killed, he's killed five workers. Uh, there are a lot of workers were not mining for a very long time here as well. Alive just got a fantastic start into this last game in the series. Yeah, um, well now we've got a Marauder coming out because, of course, the uh, Stalkers being uh, reactionary to what is going on. There's a salvage on the uh, back bunker now. And uh, this bunker has taken down one gateway and could possibly be taking down two. Now we've got the Marauder coming in, and with the Marauder now inside, I do believe the second gateway is gonna go down. I mean, Huck has been, they were on top of a hill. Huck has been pushed back down and asked to climb back up 
just to try to do some sort of damage to Alive here. And Alive just has a commanding, commanding position here on this map. And in the background, he's just doing everything he would do in a regular exactly. game. His factory's up, his barracks is up. He's going to be able to go with this very simple timing attack. Just get two medivacs, stim, combat shields, and go. And Huck is so incredibly far behind now because of this. You know, it's going to be so difficult for him to defend not just this, but the follow-up from it. That's going to be the real big thing here. He's going to be able to eventually clean this up with a few units here, as we're going to see now. But the thing is, the follow-up is going to be so incredibly difficult. And we did have cancellation on the first gateway. Second gateway almost goes down. Finally, Huck feels like he can go ahead and attack this straight on. And as the bunker does go down, he immediately brings the Marauder out, takes out at least one more of those stalkers. I think I heard half a clap for actually <laughs> Huck holding that off right there. Which is, you know, I mean, a full clap would have been fine, but already it seems like, um, you know, he just, he came back in. The general's like, all right, Huck. I realize that you're missing both your arms and one of your legs, yeah. but give it your all here. And he basically has two decisions right now. He either goes all in, or he tries to cut corners, which would be for a very fast Colossus with minimal units, or a very, very fast third. And basically, Alive will want to check for both. So he's got a bunker to make sure he doesn't lose to an all-in, and he's also got control of the middle of the map, and may even throw down a scan just to make sure that he isn't teching immediately up to something fast. But at the same time, Stim is now halfway done. As soon as that finishes, we start having medivacs out. He's even building Hellions as well, because the tech is so low from Huck, they're going to be really useful here. And it's going to be difficult here for Huck. And I really can't stress this. I'm trying to think of the different ways that Huck could actually defend against this, and I don't think he can. The one thing he may be able to do is prolong it with sentry force fields. Sure. But he's got medivacs he can easily lift up into the back of the base. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Yeah, I mean the options are plentiful right now for a live well Huck, I mean, I guess you could argue that he does have a lot of options, but I think he's looking for options that might actually win him the game here. Uh, as this is a deciding game to determine who gets the whole series. And as you mentioned, Drop, there is the first medevac moving out. Looks like it's going to go to this uh, pocket expansion here. There are a couple stalkers here, but keep in mind, all of the upgrades are about to hit. Concussive Shell is done. Stim is going to be finishing up here too. And with this medevac, these two stalkers are going to go down oh so easy. There's a cancellation on the gas. He can now focus down on these probes. Probes are going to pull out, and he's just going to pick up and back off, and he could probably do this all day long. A Again, he could probably do this while applying pressure at the front, so spreading Huck out a little bit and forcing him to be on his toes consistently. And while that happened, he sent a Hellion just straight through, and there was four, uh, four sentries, but the DPS is so low, a Hellion went straight past and scouted everything. He realized there was no forges, there's no Twilight Council, so he doesn't have to worry about DTs or any kind of attack like that. He knows the tech path and the tech tree of Huck. So he knows that Colossus may be viable, he knows that Immortals are viable, and so he already knows what he has to play against, but this, oh, excellent reactions from Alive. That could have been a really good start for Huck to come back into this, but, you know, hardly any mistakes again from Alive. Here. Yeah, and Huck really, really wanted to hit that too, and that medevac can just sneak out there and take a quick little break, just sit on the sidelines a little bit, go back in when it might be a little more difficult for Huck to actually do some sort of defense, but Huck is certainly fighting his way back right now. If we take a look at the supply, it is one 102 for Alive and 79 for Huck now as he is going to be faced with another double medevac drop coming out here. Again, going to the pocket expansion. Again, two stalkers here to defend, but they will get down, quickly take these out. One of these medevacs may fall, but the amount of units that are inside here could be quite deadly, Apollo. Yeah, he's going to be able to, well, will he even be able to clear this up? The Zealots do come in, so yeah, he will be able to clean it up, but all the probes are gone and the big attack is getting ready to be launched into the main base. And uh, he does finally clean it up, but look at this big force, this big amount of units with plus one on the brink of finishing as well. Only a roughly a few seconds, another drop into the main base as well. And, you know, multi-prong attacks here from Alive, really ripping Huck Alive. Yeah, I mean, not only that, but uh, also just this little force that's uh, standing out on the outside, just waiting on standby to roll in. Now, I mean, what is nice is that Huck still has a lot of uh, energy on those sentries, so he may not be able to go in for some sort of direct attack, but he could easily take down these rocks, force Huck to have to throw out more force fields than he would like to, or he could just uh, 
maybe distract with this factory here and roll on in. In fact, oh, oh, we all will see that Metamat go down. Yes, it does with about three units inside, but a lot of these units did manage to make their way inside. The sentries are nowhere near a positional force field advantage, and it does look like Alive will be able to do some serious, serious damage here. Yeah, there's nothing to actually stop the army of Alive here. I mean, Guardian Shield, Force Fields, that's it. He's got sentries. I mean, sentries are not pretty good against this army here, DJ Wee. Yeah, this is not good at all. In fact, there's the force fields, but it's just kind of delaying the inevitable Apollo as we have the factory landing created even more of a choke here for the Protoss army another gateway goes down and Alive is just cinching the uh, the deal here and his advantage is just getting a larger and larger Apollo as he's got another force moving on over and uh, I mean there's absolutely I just don't see anything yeah. Huck can do at this point. I mean point. probes are being pulled off GG. GG! Alive 3-0 in his group now Advances his first, wins one thousand dollars, first yeah. place. Yeah, and that's uh, not too shabby. That's not too shabby at all. And I'm interested. In, well, the thing is with Huck, I think that he got a bit unfortunate there with the kind of build. That I think the mind game from Alive was fantastic there. You know, choosing.